towering over the Cheshire Plains as the Mighty Level Telescope at Chodrell Bank Observatory. First constructed in 1957 out of recycled battleship gun turrets and named after Joddle Bank's founding father, Sir Bernard Lovell, the telescope stands up to 89 metres tall and 75 metres wide, an enduring monument to British space exploration. Accompanied by the Mark II telescope, first constructed in 1964, the Lovell telescope exists as the centre for the Multi-Element Radio-Linked Interferometer Network, or MERLIN as it is more appropriately abbreviated to. Linked with an array of telescopes peppered across the UK, Doddrell Bank has proved instrumental over the years by furthering scientists' understanding of cosmic rays, quasars, pulses and supernovas. And of course, in 1981, Doddrell Bank was host to the Far Rose Project, where Tom Baker's fourth doctor tragically plummeted 200 feet to his death after heroically thwarting the Master's diabolical scheme to hold the entire universe to ransom. A classic episode of Doctor Who, which was watched by over 6 million people in the UK when it was first aired. Doctor! It's the end. Though it may have been the end for Tom Baker's fourth Doctor, Jodrell Bank has, like the iconic Time Lord himself, regenerated many times over the years. After closing its doors to the general public in September of 2010, the observatory has reopened in 2011 with a new £3 million discovery centre. This regeneration of Jodrell Bank includes the construction of two new buildings. The Planet Pavilion acts as a visitor centre, with exhibits, gift shop and cafe that looks out at the Global Telescope. The Space Pavilion, on the other hand, is a learning centre which includes a variety of interactive activities designed especially to teach children of all ages about the work carried out by Jodrell Bank and the cosmic phenomena it observes on a daily basis. So my name's Tim O'Brien, I'm one of the astronomers here at Jodrell Bank Observatory. Basically people have been coming to Jodrell Bank for uh, many years, ever since the observatory opened actually, back in the, back in the 1940s. So it's really about all the science that goes on here, all the way from uh, what this telescope does, this big telescope, which is one of the big questions people ask, um, to how we use other telescopes around the world and in space, and the sorts of things we look at, so exploding stars, black holes, uh, the Big Bang, the origin of the universe itself, and we're hoping to sort of um, basically combine a bit of fun uh, with a bit of education, so there's a mix of different exhibits that hopefully hopefully will satisfy five-year-olds to, to 75-year-olds if, if we can manage to do that. I'm Teresa Anderson. I'm director of the University of Manchester's new discovery centre here at Joplin Bank. What we're trying to do here is inspire the scientists of the future. So what we're trying to do with our new centre is connect people to the live science that happens here at Joplin Bank. So when people come here, we're not going to lecture them, we're going to show them uh, about the fun of science. We're going to connect them up to the telescope science, the things that it's looking at. We're going to let them print out the signal from the telescope live. They'll be able to touch a rock that's fallen from outer space 4,000 years ago. It's 4.5 billion years old, so it's a really old piece of uh, uh, space rock. Uh, it's probably the oldest thing anyone will ever touch. And um, we're also going to let people see what the scientists and engineers who work here do every day, so they can find out something that's, you know, the things that are involved in being scientists. From touching a meteorite to a simulation of a black hole, the Space Pavilion includes a wealth of hands-on activities and state-of-the-art learning tools, including a touchscreen desk and a short film animated by Manchester's famous Cosgrove Hall, the people behind the much-loved Danger Mouse cartoon. One of the attractions is built around answering one of the biggest questions visitors have when coming to George Royal Bank. One of the first questions that people ask when they come here is, is what's this telescope on? Observing. And actually that's quite a challenge to answer because it could be a range of different things. So what we've done is we've, we've hooked up this, this exhibit to the telescope. So it actually gets information not just from the Lovell telescope here, which is the one that people um, focus on when they arrive, but also from our network of other telescopes all the way across the UK. So it's to remind people that actually we've got nine telescopes. It tells you which are operating, which are being maintained at the moment. It then actually shows you live signals from the telescope as you, as, as you stand here. Our engineers have actually managed to, uh, in a very jodrell bank sort of way, hooked up our big radio telescope out there to a shot till the receipt printer uh, and you can actually
get a 30 second chunk of the data that's been arriving from space at this instant and taken away from you. Um, so that's quite, a, quite an achievement. What we really need is an army of eight-year-old kids to send them round here <laughs> and find all the problems. Yeah. So we had the neighbours in yesterday and we had two little kids in and they came in and the first thing they did with this was they, they popped these things up and they went, oh it gets bigger. And they made it so big that it actually covered the entire table and zoomed into this thing and I went, okay, the software designers need to make it so it doesn't get bigger than the table. <laughs> this is an infrared camera so it's actually showing heat. Um, so it's actually looking at us with infrared light and it shows which bits of you are hot and which bits of you are cool. So I don't know, you've probably got... Yeah. My nose looks very, very cold. cold nose. So a lot yeah. of some people, <laughs> their extremities basically where your nose sticks out, it's not very warm. And so you see that as the darker colours here. And the sort of science, I mean, this is obviously, this is obviously fun, right? It's a bit of fun. Uh, but the science reason for showing this is because uh, it tells you that it's invisible light. Your eyes don't pick up infrared, we see with visible light. Our radio telescope uses radio waves. This camera uses infrared. So it's basically showing people that there's not just the light you see, there's all this invisible radiation around us all the time. And it gives us a different view, not only of ourselves, but of the universe. Very much like the Big Bang which created the universe, Jodrell Bank is forever expanding, playing an increasingly larger role in British and international astronomy. As of May, the observatory was chosen as home base for the 1.3 billion square kilometre array, which is planned to be built in either Australia or Southern Africa. The Discovery Centre is just the first phase of a series of changes to regenerate Jodrell Bank. So what's next for the observatory? Looking forward, we're going to have some great events over the summer. We're going to have a great music festival, we're connecting a, a, a group of people who are interested in music. We're going to lock the gates and make them listen to astronomy. No, seriously, we won't, but uh, you know, we're going to feature a lot of science and in between the music, and people are really excited about that. And then um, our education programme launches in May, um, and already it's very, very booked up, so that's great and really exciting for us. And we've got lots of other things um, coming on. Our new gardens will be opening probably at the end of the summer. They've been designed for us by TV gardener Chris Beardshaw, and they're on an astronomy theme, so we think that's going to be great fun as well. So as work continues at Joggle Bank and the gigantic level telescope reangles its monolithic structure to collect radio data from the far-flung recesses of space, the general public have never had a better opportunity to get involved with the observatory and understand the nature and importance of astronomy both for Britain as a nation and as an international culture. To do all this whilst hopefully inspiring a brand new generation of scientists to lessen the extraordinary gap of understanding between our world and the great cosmic forces and phenomena that we are unwittingly suspended within. My name is Charlie Fair and thank you for watching. Space, space, wanna go to space, space, yes, please, space, 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 go to space, 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 wanna go to space, space, space. Alright then, uh, final question, I'm a, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, so yes. Doctor Bank has kind of <laughs> painful memories for me. Um, Indeed, Tom Baker felt yes, it was, it, it was <laughs> on the telescope. It was, it was awful, but um, uh, would Doctor Who come back any time, do you reckon? What, to, to Doctor Bank? Yeah, Matt Smith or... Give us a call, anytime, <laughs> frankly. Alright then. <laughs>